Hidden Treasures by Harry A. Lewis Thomas A. Edison On February 11, 1845, was born at Milan, Ohio, Thomas A. Edison, now a little over 42 years of age and today enjoying a reputation as an inventor that is without a parallel in history. At eight or nine years of age, he began to earn his own living, selling papers. When twelve years old, his enterprise, pushed by ambition, secured him a position as newsboy on the Grand Trunk Railroad. Here his inventive genius manifested itself. Arranging with station agents along the line, he caused the headings of news to be telegraphed ahead, the agents posting the same in some conspicuous place. By this means, the profits of his business were greatly augmented. He next fitted up a small printing press in a corner of a car, and when not busy in his regular work as newsboy, successfully published a small paper. The subject matter was contributed by employees on the road, and young Edison was the proprietor, editor, publisher, and selling agent. He also carried on electrical experiments in one corner of the car. Finally, he entered one of the offices on the road, and here he learned the art of telegraphy. The next few years he was engaged as an operator in several of the largest cities throughout the Union, such as Cincinnati, Indianapolis, Louisville, Boston, New York, Memphis, and Port Huron. He not only became one of the most expert operators in the country, but his office was a laboratory for electrical experiments. All day long he attended to the duties of his office, and at night one would find him busy at experiments tending toward the development of the use of the telegraph. Hard work and frequent wanderings at last found him developing his ideas in Boston. He brought out duplex telegraphy and suggested a printing telegraph for the use of gold and stock quotations. His ability becoming so apparent, he was retained by wealthy men in New York at a high salary. In 1876, he removed to Menlo Park, New Jersey, where he fitted up an extensive laboratory for the prosecution and development of his enterprise. Here he has won his worldwide fame, keeping two continents in a fevered state of expectancy. Indeed, some of his inventions have been so wonderful that he might be accredited with supernatural powers. By improvement, he brought the telephone of Gray, Bell, etc., from a mere toy to an instrument of great commercial worth. Ten years ago, hardly a telephone was in use, now the business of our country would hardly know how to do without it. Of all modern inventions connected with the transmission of electrical sound, the telephone has excited, perhaps, the most interest. An instrument which not only transmits intelligible signals great distances, but also the tones of the voice so that the voice shall be as certainly recognized when heard hundreds of miles away as if the owner was speaking in the same room. No great skill is required of the operator, and if a businessman desires to speak with another person, he has but to step to an instrument in his own office, ring a bell, and thus, through a central office, connect himself with the instrument of the desired party when a conversation can take place. In its mechanism, the telephone consists of a steel cylindrical magnet, perhaps five inches long and one half of an inch thick, encircled at one end by a short bobbin of ebonite, on which is wound a quantity of fine insulated copper wire. The two ends of the coil are soldered to thicker pieces of copper wire, which traverse the wooden envelope from end to end, and terminate in the screws of its extremity. Immediately in front is a thin circular plate of iron. This is kept in place by being jammed between the main portion of the wooden case and the cap, which carries the mouth or ear trumpet, which are screwed together. Such is the instrument invented by Bell and Edison. The means to produce light by electricity next occupied his attention, and the Edison electric light was the result. 
The electric current for this light is generated by means of large magnetoelectric machines, which are driven by some motive power. It is the only light known to science which can be compared to the rays of the sun. Especially is this light useful in lighthouses, on board ships, and for lighting streets in cities. It is, however, used in factories, workshops, large halls, etc., and in the very near future will doubtless become a light in private dwellings. But, possibly, the most wonderful invention which has been the result of the inventive conception of Mr. Edison is the phonograph, a simple apparatus consisting in its original mechanism of a simple cylinder of hollow brass, mounted upon a shaft, at one end of which is a crank for turning it, and at the other a balance wheel, the whole being supported by two iron uprights. There is a mouthpiece, as in the telephone, which has a vibrating membrane similar to the drum of a person's ear. To the other side of this membrane there is a light metal point or stylus, which touches the tin foil which is placed around the cylinder. The operator turns the crank, at the same time talking into the mouthpiece. The membrane vibrates under the impulses of the voice, and the stylus marks the tinfoil in a manner to correspond with the vibrations of the membrane. When the speaking is finished, the machine is set back to where it started on the tinfoil, and, by once more turning the crank, precisely the same vibrations are repeated by the machine. These vibrations affect the ear, and this again the ear, and the listener hears the same words come forth that were talked into the instrument. The tinfoil can be removed, and, if uninjured, the sounds can be reproduced at any future date. Different languages can be reproduced at once, and the instrument can be made to talk and sing at once without confusion. Indeed, so wonderful is this piece of mechanism that one must see it to be convinced. Even the tone of voice is retained, and it will sneeze, whistle, echo, cough, sing, etc., etc. Improvements are in progress, notably among which is an apparatus to impel it by clockwork instead of a crank. The phonograph as yet has never come into extended use, but its utility is obvious when its mechanism is complete. Businessmen can use it for dictating purposes, as it is possible to put 40,000 words on a tinfoil sheet 10 inches square. The invention of any one of the foregoing must have made for Mr. Edison a worldwide fame, but when it is remembered that he has already taken out over 200 patents, one realizes something of the fertility of his imagination. Many other inventions are worthy of note which have originated at the Menlo Park Laboratory, but space forbids, although it is safe to predict that more startling inventions may yet be in store for an expectant world. End of section 85. Thomas A. Edison.